My presentation is on Michael Tausig, a political economic anthropologist from Australia. So Tausig was born in Sydney. There he went to the University of Sydney for his undergraduate studies and earned a degree in medicine before going off to graduate school. His degree of medicine would be used in many of his works as an analogy for political and government organizations. His graduate studies were at LSE, which is a very, very good school in the UK. He earned his PhD in anthropology. There, his, for his first ethnographic expedition, Tausig went to Colombia, to the Cauca Valley. There he wanted to study the descendants of former slaves in South America. So he chose a predominantly African village to study for his first and most famous book. His first and most famous book was The Devil and Commodity Fetishism in South America. This book talked about these communities that had set up these spiritual entities to be essentially a personification of all the negative things that were happening to them. This book examined the impact, the social cultural impact of slavery in the New World, specifically in South America. So the stories that these locals would make when they were either in plantations or farms was that all of the negative things that would happen so in a mine all of the bad things that could happen to miners or vice versa in a plantation all of the negative things that could happen to the crops or to the workers were personified as these evil spirits which were supposed to be the antithesis of holy and it was these communities specifically that had created that and Tosig wanted to examine how these were related to the economic and consumerist drive that essentially propagated all of these economic expansions in mining and plantations. Tausig also touched on the Marxist idea of production and the idea that the locals communities who were producing all of these goods were so poor that they were unable to own their own production. So to this, uh, Tausig was writing and alluding a lot of his works to Marxist works, which was the idea that the worker class was not able to own the product they were producing, this irony that they were unable to obtain the product they were producing. In Colombia, a lot of the local communities of natives or of African descendants were incredibly poor and still are incredibly poor. A lot of white, rich Colombians were buying plantations and mines when Tausig was observing them in the late 1970s to early 1980s. During this time, it was very economically difficult for these communities. Still to this day, it can be observed that the distribution of wealth has shown that a lot of these communities and a lot of the wealthy of Colombia still control most of the wealth. So one of his most famous books that talks more about this idea of government and economic systems is the nervous system. So as alluded to previously, Tausig used his, his knowledge of medicine to be able to write an analogy, a very clever analogy, which basically establishes the idea that governments and organizations are like a central nervous system that organize and the way they organize and use tools such as media, violence and force to control and enforce social order is observed in this book. And Tausig talks a lot about the idea of economic inequality and the overarching idea of control. This book is a series of essays that Tausig has written and collected into one overarching piece. So after Tausig spent extensive amount of time in South America, um, he would go on to the University of Columbia, New York, and he's still teaching there. Tausig teaches political and economic anthropology there. Uh, his influence on anthropology is very, very extensive. He has worked very hard and worked and produced a lot of works over his career about South American inequality and overarching inequality and political control. Um, one of the most influential things that he did is bring attention to this marginalized group of people. A lot of people focus on the impact of slavery in the North, in North America, but what Tausig was trying to do, and what there's still some work to be done, is that 
the attention needs to shift and be also seen too on South America. South America also had slavery, if not more brutal slavery than Northern America, yet there is significantly less attention that is given. And so part of what Tausi was trying to do in his work was give attention to this marginalized group that we don't have as much attention on right now. So his reputation is uh, that he's a very well-regarded anthropologist. He is uh, critically acclaimed and he's won a series of awards throughout his career. His books are quite well known. He has very famous books. Uh, his most famous book was his first work. However, The Nervous System was also another very important and influential book that he wrote. What he is occasionally regarded as a radical anthropologist, but this is because he talks a lot about some Marxist ideas, which is this idea of the condition of local proletariat communities and their economic status. Tosig has been a very, very influential member of the anthropologist community throughout his entire very highly decorated career. And here is the work cited.